This is Lauren from RetroZone, here today to show you just how easy it is to retrofit your classic Nintendo controllers for your computer. Once done, you can enjoy your favorite NES and Super NES games on your Mac or PC with that classic gaming feeling you've been craving. Now all you need is a Nintendo NES controller or Super Nintendo controller, depending on which one you want to retrofit, Phillips screwdriver that can fit in the back of the controller, rubbing alcohol and cotton balls to clean off your button contacts, wire cutters and wire strippers, soldering iron and your favorite flavor of solder, a hot glue gun, and of course, your retro kit from RetroZone. So let's get started. First step is taking apart your controller. Now I'm gonna cheat with my power drill. Now make sure to hold on to the screws because you'll need it to put it back together. So basically the inside of it is board, rubber button contacts, and little plastic buttons. Once you've removed everything from the controller, you can actually give the shell itself a little bit of a scrub if it's grimy. And if you want, run it through the dishwasher to get extra clean. Once you've done that, next step is cleaning the button contacts. Now the button contacts are the little black bits on the rubbery parts. You might think, eh, it's okay, I don't really need to do this step. Actually, it's pretty important because the contacts will give the buttons a good response. Now what you wanna do is put all the buttons back in, contacts over it, it's easy to see where they go, and then take rubbing alcohol on your cotton ball and just go to town. The arrow pad is actually the one that really needs the most attention, so you wanna go over the contacts at least a few times. And as you can see, gets all black. This is what you don't want on your contacts. So you want to just rub, rub, rub until it comes off clean. Once all your button contacts are clean, you can set it aside and move on to your board. So now you grab your board, grab your trusty cotton ball with a little bit of rubbing alcohol on it, and you want to clean the contacts on the board. Just give it a good scrub. If you flip over the board, there's sometimes a silhouette on the back and you want to hold down the wire and cut right where the silhouette ends. If there isn't like this one, you can just hold it down and cut it right where the board gets a little bit smaller. So you take your wire cutters and give it a little snip. Right. Take off the casing and there's usually a little bit of padding inside. Then you grab your wire cutters, or your wire strippers, sorry. And then take each colored wire and cut off about two millimeters to the outside casing. A little longer or a little shorter, it's not a problem. As long as you think you have enough to solder with. Once you're done, then you're done prepping the board and you can move on to my favorite step, soldering. Before you start soldering, you wanna make sure you have the wiring diagram from the website. This shows you exactly what color wire from the board solders onto what part of the retro kit. So before you start soldering it together, you wanna to add a little bit of solder onto the top the tips of the wires that we just stripped. This makes it a lot easier to solder onto the retro kit. After that's done, take it out. You want to do the same thing with the retro kit itself. Just add a little bit of solder onto the contacts you're going to solder. So on the front side, it's the Bottom, middle two contacts, you just add a little bit of solder, flip it over. On the back side, it's the bottom, middle three contacts. Once the solder's there, starting with the front side, you solder the brown and the white water, oh, the brown and the white wires on. What you want to do is warm up the solder on the board just a little bit, stick the wire in and let it cool. Same thing with the white wire. Let it cool. Flip it back over and do the same thing with the orange, red, and yellow wires. So you heat it up on the board, stick the wire in, let it cool. And with the red wire and the yellow wire. And then voila, 
you soldered your retro kit. Once you're done with all the soldering, you put just a little dab of hot glue onto the chip of the retro kit. And then you will place it so the end of the retro kit is just about even with the chip on the board. Ta-da! Once you've done that, you take your clean case, pop the board back in, lace the wires back through the pegs, like so. Close it back up. Put your screws back in. Screw it all back together. And then, ta-da! You've retrofitted your Nintendo NES controller to work on your computer. All that's left to do now is go test it. As you can see, the controller works great. I'm playing Nest Snake here. Hope you learned a lot today and you're going to retrofit your own controllers soon. You can look for my next video coming out soon. This is Lauren from RetroZone.